Hey guys, what's happening? So uh, this video was recommended to me and uh, it's gonna look at some strange reasons or surprising reasons that the Quran is actually from God. Every single book in the world must have an author. The yes. Noble Quran is therefore no exception. It is a book, so it must have an author. All Muslims believe that Allah is the one who revealed the Qur'an to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. But those who do not believe so, they think otherwise. But who do they think wrote the Qur'an then? I mean, if they don't believe that the Qur'an is from Allah, then who is it from then? Because there aren't really many options, since Prophet Muhammad was the one who dictated the words to his companions, the writers of Wahi to write it down. So if they don't think it's from Allah, then it should be one of these four options, simply because there isn't any other possibility. So it should either be that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, authored the Quran himself. The second possibility would be that he used the previous books like the Bible or the Torah to write the Quran. Third, a Christian or a Jewish person had helped Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to write the Qur'an. Or fourth, it was Satan who had helped the Prophet to write the Qur'an and tell him about the news of former nations that he hadn't witnessed. So these four are the only possibilities there are. If the Qur'an was not from Allah, there are no other options as to where the Qur'an came from. So, if we can disprove or refute these four possibilities, then we're left with the only remaining possibility, which is that it is from Allah. So let's look at these possibilities one by one and see how they stack up. First, Prophet Muhammad was the one who authored the Qur'an himself. And if you do think so, then how can you explain the following problems? The first problem is the style of writing. We do know how the Prophet talked and what his style looked like. How? We do indeed have thousands of ahadith, which are the quotations and sayings of the Prophet. So we know exactly what the style of these sayings look like. And it doesn't take an expert to realize the big difference between the style of the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the style of the Qur'an. It clearly shows two distinct styles of writing. The second problem, blaming the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the Qur'an. The Qur'an contains several blaming verses, or in Arabic, <laughs> Ayatul Itab, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, is blamed for certain actions, like... Or يا أيها النبي لما تحرم ما أحل الله لك تبتغي مرضات أزواجك. Or in this example, عبس وتولى أن جاءه الأعمى. And there are many other examples belonging to the same category. So if it was the Prophet himself who wrote the Qur'an, why would he blame himself in front of his companions? It is just simply not logical. The third problem is the prophecies. The Qur'an contains many prophecies about many events, some of which actually came true in the time of the Prophet. Like the one in Surat Ar-Rum. الروم في أدنى الأرض وهم من بعد غلبهم سيغلبون 
في بضع سنين. Or the prophecy about the liberation of Mecca or فتح مكة in Surah Al-Fatih. لا تدخلون المسجد الحرام إن شاء الله آمنين آمنين محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين لا تخافون. If the Prophet wrote the Quran himself. How could he have known things that were going to happen in the future? Wouldn't it be a big gamble losing your status among your companions if he predicted that something would happen and it didn't happen? The fourth problem is the delay of revelations. In certain incidents, the wahi or the revelation was delayed. Like when a Jewish man came to the Prophet asking him about the people of the cave. But the Prophet said that he would answer him tomorrow, expecting the wahi, but without saying insha'Allah. And so the wahi was delayed. Also, when his own wife was falsely accused in her honor, the wahi was delayed as well, which was a very difficult time for the Prophet, peace be upon him. If he was the one making the Qur'an, wouldn't it have been more convenient for him to just come up with an answer in these situations and clear his name and his wives among his companions? These were not the only two incidents, but there are other situations in which the Prophet couldn't give a direct answer because he had to wait for the wahi. Problem number five, the challenge. The Quran contains many verses that challenge anyone who doesn't believe it. The challenge was to produce anything like it. The Qur'an even challenges humans and the jinn for that. If the Prophet, a human, had made the Qur'an himself, why would he risk embarrassing himself needlessly by challenging all humans and jinn to produce something like it? Problem number six, the personal information of the Prophet. The Qur'an contains no personal information about the Prophet, not his life, his children, or his wives. His name was mentioned in the entire Qur'an only four times, which is much fewer than the mention of other Prophets. Like Moses, who was mentioned 134 times, and his story came in 34 surahs of the Qur'an. Jesus was also mentioned dozens of times. Abraham, Noah, Joseph, and other prophets. So if he was the one who had made the Qur'an himself, wouldn't he have given himself more credit, or at least talked about his struggles more often? So as we can see here, this first possibility that the Prophet came up with the Qur'an himself is actually illogical and full of problems and questions for which there are no answers. Conclusion it is impossible that the Prophet could have written the Qur'an himself. But could it be that he used the help of others? Well, then let's look at possibility number two. The Prophet used previous books like the Bible or the Torah to write the Qur'an. And this possibility could easily be refuted because the Prophet was illiterate, which means that he could not read or write. And even if we assume that he was not illiterate, where would he have got hold of the Bible or the Torah in Arabic? Did you know that the first Arabic translation of the Bible was made in the 9th century, which is a hundred years after the death of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Then how could he have read it? Added to that, and until around the 18th century, the church was essentially hiding the Bible from common people and forbade its translation. So the Bible was not just readily available, let alone a translation thereof. This leaves us with no other conclusion than that the Prophet could not have used the previous books to write the Qur'an. This possibility is off the table. Moving to possibility number three. 
If the Prophet didn't write the Qur'an himself, he didn't read previous books, was it then a Jew or a Christian that helped the Prophet write the Qur'an? If we sift through all the authenticated hadith, you will only find a single hadith about the encounter between the Prophet and someone called Waraqa ibn Nawfal, a Christian. However, the Prophet met Waraqa ibn Nawfal after the wahi or the revelation came to him, not before. Furthermore, based on authenticated hadith, Waraqa even testified that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the Prophet. So how could he have been the one who would help him to write the Qur'an? And even if it wasn't Waraqa and it was some other Christian or Jew who would help the Prophet to write the Qur'an, how could they allow him to write verses like these? لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ or a verse like this. لَتَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا How can it make sense that a Jew or a Christian would help the Prophet write something like that? This problem leaves us no choice but to say that it is impossible for anyone to have helped the Prophet write the Qur'an. Now, moving to the final possibility. Since the Prophet was able to tell prophecies and new things a human could not have known, then it must be Satan who would help him write the Qur'an. And this is indeed one of the most illogical possibilities, since we, as Muslims, are taught to seek refuge from Satan before starting to recite the Qur'an. فَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Added to that, there are numerous verses in the Qur'an declaring Satan as the mortal foe of the human. So how could it be possible that Satan helped the Prophet to write verses cursing Satan himself and declaring him as the enemy? And why would Satan tell his plan to tempt humans and expose himself like that? Therefore, it is impossible for Satan to have helped the Prophet write the Qur'an. And now that all four possibilities out there are off the table, we're left with the only possibility that it is from the one with unlimited omniscient knowledge that the Qur'an is from Allah. And what better way to end this video than with Allah's words addressing those who deny the Qur'an. إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ ذِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَكِينٍ مُطَاعٍ ثَمَّ أَمِينٍ وَمَا صَاحِبُكُمْ بِمَجْنُونٍ وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفُقِ الْمُبِينٍ وَمَا هُوَ عَلَى الْغَيْبِ بِضَنِينَ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ 
العالمين. Thanks for watching. I hope you have learned something new today. If you did, please like and share the video for other people to learn from it. And please subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. So those are some pretty compelling arguments to build a case that the Quran is divinely inspired. Muhammad wasn't somebody that could have just made this up or he couldn't have gotten it from other sources and people. How could it have been Satan? How could it have been a Jew or another Christian? And yes, the Quran does throw out several challenges in various different parts saying like, okay, produce a page like this and uh, ask people to seek knowledge and everything. So, uh, of course, you know, somebody wouldn't necessarily, who, well, who's not a Muslim anyways, wouldn't necessarily just say, well, this is from God, believe it, God says this and that, and this is what he says is what he wants you to do, and just believe it, because that's going against even what the Quran asks people to do. People are asked to go and ask questions and examine the Quran, look into it themselves, then come to their own conclusions. And I think that's the best way that somebody can come to a realization, because they're are so many different views and beliefs and opinions and people claiming that they heard from God and this is from God and uh, God has this message to say and really it's just kind of like you know people talking so uh, when we have so much of that and now this book the Quran comes along and Muslims are sharing it um, people, when they hear it, it's like, whoa, 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 no, 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 okay, this is just one of those other things now that are claiming to be from God, but no. Nah. So this is why it's important to dive into it and, and learn and, and study and read the book yourself to come to your own conclusion. Well, I guess people are different, right? Sometimes people read a book and like, oh, wow, this is from God, and that's their conclusions. Others read it and they're like, eh, nah. Okay, that's another thing too, but at least take the time to look into it yourself. That's I think the main thing and come to your own conclusions there. But like really open, openly reading because you know when we look at something and we read something with a bias, that affects sometimes how we interpret what is being said versus just reading something just the way it is. If we impose our own biases, then that's really what we're gonna find in most cases, our own biased views, we're gonna just see more of them. Then on top of that, you have other people believing that they already have God's word and all the words that are to be revealed to them in the form of scriptures and the Bible and other holy writing. Then, you know, you have the Quran and people are like, oh, but it goes against what my book says so it can't be people have their favorites and their bias and their own beliefs you know that's understandable but i say this even before we get into oh it's sent from god or not it's inspired or not or muhammad could have made this up or he couldn't have made it up before we get into even all of those topics right and address those points even i think the starting point that is most beneficial for people especially if they're coming from a religious background is this if you want someone else to read your holy book and get to know it and come to the truth that you believe that your holy book is sharing you must also be willing to learn about someone else's holy book and read it and be open to see some of the knowledge and the wisdom that they say they got from their own book. So you see how this is like a give and take. If you're putting that standard on other people to read your book, you got to be open to also look and read their book as well. Doesn't mean that you're going to change your mind or convert to any religion, but just that openness, you know? You give, you receive, you receive, you give. Now, if you're someone who's not from a religious background, then maybe the approach is going to be a little bit different. I think in that case, most likely the best thing to do is just like if you're a Muslim, you know, you just live out your Muslim life the best of your ability and you share based on what 
your holy book, your Quran says, and let other people see that in you, be a benefit of people. And then they're gonna start to look and say like, oh, wow, you know, that person is always happy or that person always is so inspiring. What is it? You know, because if they don't have any other religious basis, then saying, oh, this is from God, this is from God, they don't even believe God in the first place. So that's not gonna work. But yeah, so this video, I think it, it speaks to a level after somebody is willing to read the Quran for themselves who isn't a Muslim. But even before that, what I was saying is that there's still some steps to even get to this point to examine the arguments against uh, Muhammad, looking at the prophecies. You, you got to be in it in order to even think those questions are relevant in the first place. And I think this video really did lay out some pretty solid points when it comes to the Quran being inspired. So yeah, someone else may look at this and say, okay, this is just a complete waste of time. I know the Quran is false, whatnot. And that's that may be your belief and your view. But as for me, I think it's still worth looking into it because I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm willing, for me anyways, willing to read things and understand and, and learn. So that's where I'm at and it did provide some compelling arguments. So for me, that's why I look into the Quran and that's why I, I, I learn from it, you know? But yeah, as usual guys, I'm curious to know what your thoughts were about this video or about anything that I shared. Were you in terms of your belief in the Quran or any other holy book? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Join in on the conversation, guys. It's always good hanging out with you. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Later.